Die or die. Cold, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. CJ Ack, they ain't no longer a bomb. They ain't no longer a bomb. They ain't no longer a bomb. bomb. CJ Ack, they ain't no longer a bomb. Good morning, cousin. I am Uncle Mike Mike, your favorite YouTuber's favorite uncle. And after a, I think about a two-week hiatus here and not posting much much content on YouTube, I am back live streaming. We are we are gonna go ahead here and we'll go ahead and mute that. We are gonna go ahead and do a flight here, a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Xbox Series. X, and so I'll talk about that real soon here. But let's go ahead and just talk about some notums first. Still running a contest once I reach 500 subscribers, got a goal to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of 2023. But for the 500 subscriber giveaway, you can go down the description and you can read all the contest rules down there. Also, uh, playing the live stream here in a week, so that would be February 20, what would that be, 26th? Uh, Sunday mornings here at 9 a.m. Eastern time because I like to have my my coffee and oh well, what else do we want to talk about well we're going to be talking about D and D Dungeons and Dragons I've been back playing it both on the actual tabletop at my house with friends but I'm also building a Discord play by post server I'm about to start that campaign real soon so yeah if you're watching this after the live stream uh click that like button if you do subscribe if you haven't comment share come join me in chat in a future live stream and with that let's go ahead and game on and so here we are sitting in the cessna citation jet Mustang, a, a new, oh, you want to call it a new uh, flight model that they've come out with, new airplane that they've come out here with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Xbox Series X. But let's go ahead and let's get in the air, and then we can uh, talk about what we want to, what we're doing, and where we're going. So we're pretty much all set. Flaps are ready to go. I did all this before stream. Everything is ready to go. We are in Scotland. And because of, since we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons, I thought, hey, what a better way to take a flight than around the castles and locks of Scotland. So, all right, with that, let's go ahead and the break comes off. A little bit of power, and here we go. So yeah, this is a Citation Jet here, or the Mustang, as I think it's called now, is somewhat near and dear to my heart. That's why I was real happy that they actually brought out a flight model for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 here on the Xbox Series X. And so here we are lined up and let's get going. And 100 knots. And rotate. How's rate? Gears coming up. So here is the Mustang. Right, we are taking off from Inverness, Scotland. 
Hey, looking good. Flaps coming up. I have actually been to Inverness, Scotland in real life back when I was 18 years old. Alright, come back up the power a little bit. And let's go ahead now and pitch for climb. And let's go ahead and put on the autopilot. There we go. Alright, beautiful. Looking good. So we are basically just doing a direct GPS flight here. I've programmed in the flight plan. You can see it there in the center of the multifunctional display there. But yeah, I have been to Inverness, Scotland. Ooh, that is some loud stuff. I'm going to have to tone down the sound there for you. There we go. We'll do something like that. But here is Inverness, Scotland beautiful I have actually been on here on this bay I have been to Inver Inverness right here is the town of Inverness I have been through the river and the lock that goes into the lake or the lock where so we're, we are first gonna fly up here to Loch Ness and yes that is that is Loch Ness, like you know it. That is where Nessie is, the Loch Ness monster. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and come back on the power here. Go ahead and get this set up for some. We're, gonna, we're not going to go high. We're going to we're going to sightsee. So we're going to go at about four thousand five hundred feet is what I've set for right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and set some power right around two hundred knots or so. But there we go. And so right off, right out the nose there, that is Loch Ness, where Nessie, the Loch Ness monster, is. And we're flying down here to the old castle ruins that I've been to. My brother and I did the backpacking trip through Europe and through the UK back in whew, back in 1989. <sighs> so that's gonna be. Our path here, you can see it on the multifunctional display. We're going to go check out some castles that are up here, some Scottish castles. And so, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come out here to the old Loch Ness Castle Ruins, then take a right turn to the east, or sorry, to, to the west, and head out and go ahead and look at some other castles here. Here in the Citation Jet Mustang. I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that sound looks pretty good. Yes, I think that's it's a better sound. It's really loud on the outside. So for this flight model. So that's why I needed to turn down the audio for you. Here is the beautiful countryside, Scottish countryside. Again. Microsoft Flight Simulator is just amazing with what the whole graphics and all that. But all right, so we are coming up here on right off that that point right out there. That is where the castle ruins are. But yeah, so I've been to been to Loch Ness, been to Inverness back in 1989, right after I graduated high school, and so. Been to in Scotland, been to Edinburgh, that's where we're we're gonna fly over Edinburgh and then land in Glasgow. I've been all the way up here to Inverness, so that's the farthest north I've been in the UK. But we are now coming up onto Castle Ruins. They're just right right off the nose there. You can kind of see them coming into view. They're not a landmark in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so we don't have the the landmark symbol. So, everything is, lights looking good, planes looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and keep, lights are all good. Everything's, everything's looking good, but yeah. So, the reason why this is near and dear to my heart, the Citation Jet, is because back in 1992, I did an internship for nine months with Cesta Aircraft Company as I was getting my aerospace engineering degree. And the Citation Jet here was actually in flight testing when I was there, so. But there is the Castle Ruins right off the nose, going right below the, so I've, I've been to those Castle Ruins, stood right there looking for a Loch Ness 
looking for Nexi. So, looking for the Loch Ness Monster. So here we go, making that right turn to the west. You can see the parking lot there, because those castle ruins are are real famous. So if you ever get up to Inverness, Scotland, go look for the Loch Ness Monster. Make sure you go there to head up to those castles. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. We did a bus tour. It, it actually drove us down here to the ruins. And then I'm not sure where we picked up, but then we picked up a, a, a boat and then we went back up the lock and then went through the, the lock into the river and back to the town of Inverness. So that was, that was amazing. <laughs> so, all right, well, here we are now. We're, now we're heading out to another castle. I think most of these castles now that are on our flight plan here that we're going to be doing, as you can see, is zigzagging through the, the highlands here of Scotland. I think they're going to be, most of them are going to be landmarks. So we'll have a little icon in Microsoft Flight Simulator for that. We can also go ahead and turn on, yeah, we got we got somebody else out here. That's another human player. And yeah, there's another one. So there's an Airbus 320, Ice Dog. Oop. And then you've got Twin Otter over here and the Twin Otter. <laughs> and then we got Surf God out here, the TBM 930 that we got. That's a really good airplane to fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox Series X, if you're interested in that, so. But yeah, it's pretty loud when you go into the external view there. So we're gonna kinda sit in here. But I guess, you know, let's see what view I've got set up here. Oh yeah, there we go. Got your view as my co-pilot. So there we go from the co-pilot seat. So as we head on over to our first castle, that's actually in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so that one that we just passed over, that was a castle of ruins, but now we'll we'll head over to another castle out here. And they'll give us the names, they'll give us a little landmark and all that, so I can't remember. I know we're gonna go like over Balmora Castle and Edinburgh Castle and so on, so But we'll get we'll get names when we get we get over there. So But again, the reason why I'm actually flying up here this morning is because talking about dungeons and dragons too. It's one race I like live stream in Microsoft Flight Simulator because we can fly and then like in the real world you get up to cruise and then you can come up here and you can chat and you can talk about whatever you want <laughs> because that's what it's like in the cockpit so yeah I've been really getting back into Dungeons and Dragons after over 30 years um, I was that generation that you now I was a little kid when Dungeons and Dragons first came out and I probably started first playing because my brother was four years older than me and so we really started playing in, ooh, what would that be, like, s between second and third grade is really when I kind of was first, so that would be like seven, so I'll be like 79, so just a couple years after it came out. I remember having, like, the pamphlet and stuff, and then started getting, you know, then the, oh, the, I guess I'll say the books and stuff like that. So I remember all that kind of stuff happening back when I was a kid so all right let's see what we've got here uh, ground speeds 211 knots everything's looking good we've got about six minutes or so here before we get to our next castle we've got time to to chat here but beautiful day up here in the highlands of Scotland the mountains of Scotland like so we got this another another human player right there surf god 1982 but I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the name tag we'll we'll keep an eye out for him and see what uh, see what we're able to find but, but one of the things that's uh has been happening a little bit more for me and that's one reason why i haven't posted a lot of content here on my youtube channel and it's also been two weeks since i've live streamed is well uh work has kind of picked up for me uh, a little bit uh, in real life and for that reason you know, i've been really enjoying playing dungeon dragons with a a, a friend couple so husband and wife, that's friends of us. The four of us have been playing Dungeons and Dragons here on our dining room table. And I've been enjoying making the campaign I've already got probably, oh, I, I can't even tell you how much, I guess I'll say sessions, how many hours of story and characters and NPCs and monsters and all of this. And I really like the story and, and how it intertwines and all this. But it's already getting a little hard to always find time to get together with just things that are going on. 
but I'm just gonna kind of stop here. I, I'm I'm pretty sure 4,500 feet will. It looks like yeah, we're gonna clear this mountain, so I'm not gonna climb up anymore. <laughs> but I've really been enjoying Dungeons and Dragons, but it's been getting harder to find time to get together because they're a uh, 10 year old. She's about to be 11 year old daughter is doing uh, sports and I think soccer and that kind of stuff. So it's just getting harder for you know them and just you know like it is with any get together. It's hard to find time, right, in the real life to actually get together and, and play Dungeons and Dragons. And then I was actually reading about other ways to play Dungeons and Dragons. And, of course, when email, probably AOL and all that kind of stuff came out here, what, the 90s, I guess, early 90s, something like that, is people started playing Dungeons and Dragons uh, over email. And I thought... That's amazing. So I started reading about the history of that. And, of course, now with Discord and chat servers and all this kind of stuff, um, there's a version of Dungeons and Dragons that people call. It's called PBP, Play by Post. And so I've been researching that, and then I was like, man, I'm, this, sounds, this sounds amazing because it's a, it's a way to actually do, like, collaborative storytelling or collaborative creative writing but you still have the randomness and the decision making by the dice of Dungeon Dragon system. So I have been working on Discord to create a play by post Dungeons and Dragons, you know, D20 system and I'm real close to starting it the first campaign which it's uh it's set at a small school, and I'm kind of paying homage to one of my favorite computer games that came out, which was Zork, that text-based adventure game on the computer back in the day. And so uh, it's called the Zork School is the campaign. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it out and seeing how, how this could work. Oh, we've off right off the nose there. You can actually see the dot now. So the landmark uh, symbol in Microsoft Flight Simulator has shown up for our first castle. So we'll go off autopilot. We'll we'll probably here in just a moment. We'll, we'll duck down low so we can do a we can do a flyby. We'll do like a maverick, you know, and you do that circus, circus stunt flyby over a castle. So yeah, I'm real close to starting this whole campaign of a play-by-post Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And the purpose is, one, is to have fun, uh, but it's also to learn Dungeons and & Dragons and its, and its basic rules. But it's also, there's a lot of technology and application integration with Discord, Dungeons & Dragons Beyond, and they even have a bot that inter interlocks or it, uh, integrates, not interlock, integrates D&D &D Beyond with Discord. So I'm looking forward to that. So, all right, so with that, let's go ahead and let's come off autopilot. Let's come back on the power a little bit. And I see where the castle's at, so let's go ahead and I'm out of idle, so it's my airplane now, but actually it's your airplane from your seat. So here we are, we're gonna die. We're gonna go in this canyon right here and pop out, pop out. Right over here. Do a flyby of this castle, so and then we'll just climb back up, get back on the course. My airplane here. Oh yeah, it's a nice. It's this is a just a nice little airplane right here. I just really really enjoying. And again, again, it's nostalgic for me because again, the Cessna, the Citation jet here, the Mustang as it's called now. Uh, it was in flight testing when I was at Cessna Aircraft Company. So, all right, let's go ahead and bring in some power. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not wigging out or anything. It's, there's, there was a little bug. <laughs> All 
All right. And if you're watching, make sure you click that like button. Click that like button if you do. Put it that way. But here we go. And there is the castle. Speed looks good. Oh, that's beautiful, though. I'd love to go right here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. Very cool. All right. Go ahead and bring in some power, get the climb back going. Let's go ahead and get back on our flight play. That was cool, birds right there. All right, climb back up to 4,500 feet. Like I said, flying from the right seat because you're my co pilot, so I might as well fly from your side. All right, let's go ahead and get on, on course here. We can. Get this set here to about go ahead and do 200 knots of the climb. Get back to 4,500. Autopilot is on. There we go. So yeah, I've made I've, I've made four characters. It's it's again it's the whole idea of this DD &D play by post server and then the campaign. Look how beautiful this is. Wow. Again, this is this is console. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Xbox Series X. Look at this. Look at the tag, PPG. <laughs> the windshield and stuff. All right, back to 4,500 feet. Let's go ahead and come back on the power, get back into cruise power. There we go. Wow. That right there in itself is amazing. <laughs> the scenery. But yeah, so I'm got this whole D and D campaign play by post on Discord. I haven't really used Discord a whole lot, so it's been fun to actually learn Discord and the integration of Discord with Dungeons and Dragons. But we're about to start the campaign. I have created the four characters. Uh, I will control the characters, all the dice rolls. It's pretty amazing, the integration between D&D &D Beyond and, and Discord. But I'll, I'll control all the dice. I'll click all the buttons. That way the, the characters, or sorry, the players can focus on what they want their characters to do, the story, the narration, the uh, conversations, the discussions, and all of that. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to learn. I expect, you know, to make changes and all that for future campaigns because the world is basically just the school. So it's basically like a, uh, what do they call it? A, uh, a cloister? Is that what it's called? Like where you kind of like go, you know, school or a religious where it's like a little walled city, if you want to call it. It's not really a city. It's just, it's a school. So it's got, it's got a main hall. It's got some a little dormitory. It's got like a wizard's tower, and then it's got you know two other like guard towers and a wall, rectangular wall all around. And it's got a yard for you know doing range combat and archery and all that, and then a little arena for doing melee combat. And so I've been posting it on Twitter. And I've been really enjoying also hand drawing all of my maps and stuff like that. So I'm not using tech or I'm using technology, but I'm not using like map creators and that type of stuff to make the maps i'm doing all of this by hand which has just really been almost really been um you know soothing and relaxing and so on so our next castle is landmark is straight ahead here so we've got our next castle coming up this flight will probably take oh you know a little over an hour or so to to accomplish here at you know 200 knots here in the in the Mustang. I wonder if we've got, see what kind of view. 
I don't think we have. Oh, whoa, okay, we don't. Forgot I'm in drone mode. Maybe come out here like this. There we go. Kind of do the drone. Look at that. That now that's that's kind of a cool cool view there. So actually, I don't think this is the castle. This is the this is the aqueduct train bridge thing that's real famous in the Harry Potter movie. So, and as I'm looking to see where this is at, we're about to go off autopilot and kind of duck down in this valley here at 11 o'clock here in just a moment. And we'll check that out. So I'm also going to make sure over here that I've got live chat going on. So in case anybody who's watching wants to chat, that would be amazing. But there we are. Okay, I can actually see it. So I'm going to come off autopilot. I'm going to come back on the power. I'm going to go into a, I'm going to go into a bank, but what I'm doing is I'm just letting the nose fall through. So being a private pilot myself and then an aerospace engineer and so on, you know, it, where pilots really get in, into trouble is, you know, they, is really the, well, they force the airplane. So I'm not forcing the airplane here to really do anything crazy. Uh, I'm not pushing on the stick to go down. I, I'm letting the plane, gravity, the aerodynamics, the you know the the combination of power and you know drag and all of this. This is like the Glen Flin Flinchin Aqueduct or something like that. So, all right, just duck down here. We'll, we might have to head west before we head east here, just to be safe. But here we go. Yeah, this is this famous. Like I said, to me, it's famous because of Harry Potter. So, all right, here we go. Bring in the power, and let's just go into external view here. And here it is: the uh, Glenfinnan, Glenfinnan viaduct, not aqueduct, viaduct. But there it is. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Let's bring in the power. We have to climb back up here. Got all these mountains, so we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to get. We don't want to smack into a mountain. I'm gonna give you a nice view, but we need to. We need to head east here. So we're gonna climb up first. So we're passing through 1,500 feet here. Clearly all of this is down at sea level. Let's go ahead and get up here and just, that way I can just come over in my seat here and just take a look. All right, looks like we're gonna be able to clear the mountains now. So we'll just continue our climb here. Go ahead and let's go back in your seat here now that we know that we're gonna clear those mountains. And look down so we can see the flight instruments. Everything is looking good now. The climb up. This is a beautiful country though. Just beautiful. We just gotta do a little flying here before we Go back talking about dungeons and dragons. All right, looking good here. Let's go ahead now and little pilot is coming on. Climb on up back to. 4,500 feet, GPS mode is on. So we'll let the autopilot here, Auto, our German co-pilot, go ahead and intercept our glide path here, or our flight path here. But there is the viaduct down there. That is beautiful, I think it's Fort, Fort Williams, I think is the is the area here, the town somewhere. I'm not, not really sure, but I think the town in this area 
And of course you can see there's a lot of locks and all kinds of stuff, lakes, locks out here, so. Sneak the sneak 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 sta I don't know. Beautiful. Just a, just a oh, let me go back here. Just amazing scenery here. Again, this is Game Pass on Xbox Series X flight sim, so and there's a whole bunch of you know things that you can do to make it easier if you're if you're new to fly, if you're new to flight sims, you're new to aviation, all this kind of stuff. So but yeah, I'm, I was thrilled when they came out with this with this cot with this uh airplane. It's got the whole G one thousand interface, which is just a really cool avionics suite. Uh, the model looks real good inside. So and it's a jet. I mean, come on. It's a jet, people. You gotta love jets. <laughs> so. All right. Well, look at that. That's a hell of a mountain right here at 1 o'clock coming out the nose. So, all right. I need some, I need some coffee. So I don't want to do any, you know, spoilers here for this play-by-post campaign that I've that I've created but yeah it's set at the school but again it's really about learning these this integration and stuff and plus what I'm um, the rule is that myself as the dungeon master and the players that you have look at that's beautiful look at that mountain though that's that is pretty spectacular. This might be Fort William. <laughs> but yeah, the purpose of really the, the this play by post campaign, one is to have fun, one is to learn these integrations, and three, it's really to be able to play Dungeon and Dragons because you know, our in real life schedules are just sometimes really hard to get together and play literally on the tabletop or even online. And so I really thought about, oh, I'm gonna play, you know, online with either like Zoom or, you know, Microsoft Teams or, or Discord itself. And then when I learned about this play by post, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that right there is amazing. <laughs> and so, really been working and i wanted to make it where as a dungeon master i could bring the players together but they could also play separately and explore the world as individuals and tell the story as individuals and so that's why i came up with this whole idea of you know the school uh at small world that way they could explore and tell their own stories and i could respond to their individual stories or I could bring them together to, you know, to fight a monster or something together if I wanted to. And so thinking about it, probably like I could expand the world then to be the same concept, just a little bigger. So the players could literally be walking, excuse me, walking around doing their own things individually, telling their own stories individually. And I could keep track of it. I could respond to them, right? Uh, on their own individual story level, uh, they could meet each other in you know in the story. They could then talk to each other and all this if they wanted to. So, all right, we're a little fast here. I need to come off the power. So I'm not really flying this realistically, but we basically just busted the speed limit there, doing 278 knots. So then I'm going to slow back down to about 200 knots. But I guess that was okay because, you know, there's it's just beautiful scenery out here with the, the lakes, the locks. Hmm. Oh, you know what? If I finish, you know, I might just say this. If I finish, if I finish live streaming early, I might have to run to our local deli because they got bagels and locks. So, and I like bagels and locks. My mother likes bagels and locks, and Aunt Cindy likes pork sausage 
egg and cheese <laughs> breakfast sandwich so but i know they on sundays they close at 11 so we'll see we'll see what happens well, we are just going to enjoy our flight here as you now see we're heading east crossing over and we're going to head a little back north a little bit and then work our way south down toward edinburgh edinburgh's got i've been to edinburgh i've been to, i've been inside edinburgh castle that is a classic huge medieval castle so but we're heading over here to another another i think this is another castle now that we're heading to and we're going to be okay i can start to see scenery behind this terrain that's right in front of us you know i actually could turn on terrain if you want to see that so let's see here map options terrain so there's topographical this is relative so and if i come back down here I think it's right here. There we go. So now this is all relative terrain. So clearly we can just look out the window and see what the train's like, but now you can see. Let's go ahead and turn on name tag, see if there's up oh, there is another human pilot out there. Anybody else? Yeah. There's zero space out there. Oh, well, there's a few people out there. Flying up here in the highlands of Scotland with us. But here we are, passing on over. There we are. This is drone mode, so let's go ahead and you can set the drone to like that. Really puts it to you know, really puts it to scale. <laughs> How big this planet is. Look at that though. That is cool, dude, right there. Just think about all of the stories that have happened, that will happen, in your imagination that could happen in terrain like this. It's funny because, like, this this hill we're past, mountain we're passing over right now that's going all out of the screen here reminds me of the ghost, the whole ghost story thing in Grand Theft Auto V. You'd go up on top of the mountain. There was like I think like a grave site, right? And there would there would be a, a gal, a, a woman ghost up there. I can't remember the exact story, <laughs> but yeah, beautiful day to be flying over Scotland. So, so but yeah, if you uh, if you want to put down in chat here anything that you want to talk about, if you're watching, like I said, we're just sitting here, we're flying. Got, you're sitting in the right seat here. This is your view as we are now heading east across the highlands of Scotland over to our next landmark, some other castle. I know we passed Balmora Castle. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and the, and the developers didn't model uh, Anik Castle. And Anik Castle is where they you know, filmed some of the Harry Potter. And so talking about harry potter just because you know hogwarts legacy came out and fantastic beautiful amazing world game mechanics are great I, I like the magic in it but for some reason it hasn't like just grabbed my attention uh both aunt cindy's got a character i've got a character and for some reason it just didn't like just i don't know grab my attention not really quite sure why. I mean, it's like I said, it's a beautiful world to go explore the castle. And so that's what's really, really neat is you really get a new appreciation for the world of Harry Potter, right? The, the world building, which is one of the things that I'm thoroughly enjoying here in with Dungeons and Dragons. It's just that whole world building. And when I say world building, it's not just the maps and the buildings and all that kind of stuff. It's also the stories. Uh, I've got a whole map for the tabletop uh, campaign that we're doing with friends here on our dining room table. And I've got this whole city. And so I've already put in like the major NPCs and the stories and how they're linked and how the players can decide to go back to places where they've already been. And, you know, there's basically like you know, crimes and misdemeanors, if you want to call it. And, you know, there's all this, uh, you, you know, depending on how they view it, 
you know, if it is a tragedy, is it, you know, again, criminal. So, and, you know, kind of putting in some intrigue and putting in some, you know, political uh, strife, if you want to say it, and, and some discourse and all of this. So I'm really, really enjoying, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, because you can kind of investigate some of those, oh, what do you want to call it? You can investigate some of those issues, those like in real life issues in Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, the political, you know, against strife and the political battling and all that, or you can just be a dungeon crawler and just go through and roll dice for combat and try to kill shit, <laughs> which in itself is amazing. That's the neat thing because most of Dungeons and Dragons is all up here in your head using your imagination, your creativity, and that's one reason that I really enjoy it. So, because I've always been pretty good at starting stories and I've always thought about writing, you know, a fiction or something like that. The problem is I'm just I'm just lazy. And so I start stories but then I never finish them. And this is a collaborative way Dungeon Dragons is like a collaborative way of telling a story and really getting help that collaboration and that rolling of the dice to kind of see what happens then make up that choose your own adventure so all right autopilot's coming off power's coming off and we're going to do the same thing even though the next castle is straight off the nose what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I do some some wing wags here because as soon as we go into a bank like this the nose will fall out more than if it would if I just went off power oh well, there's another it looks like another train track or something or maybe no it's not it's just a river right here but here we are coming down in getting our descent going Here we are, Blair Castle. So here we are going into Blair Castle. You can see now the the terrain, the relative terrain is really getting red here now on us. Since we are getting low, that stuff is not looking good. All right, let's go ahead and, which way we need to head? We need to head about 45 degrees. To the left here so we'll come over Blair Castle and take a turn here go up that valley right right out there at 10 o'clock all right bring in some power there is Blair Castle way we go Beautiful. That's amazing right there. All right, back in the cockpit. Let's go ahead and come and climb power. Here we go. I'm still on the sticks here. Autopilot is not on. I'll go ahead and fly us up over this hill right here. Make sure everything is good. 175 knots. Go ahead and get a nice climb. We'll just go right over this right here. Climb out away from Blair Castle. Going back to 4,500 feet. About 2,000 feet per minute. We'll clear this terrain, no problem. Again, I thought 4,500 feet, looking at the charts and stuff, it looked like 4,500 feet was going to be alrighty. So, and it is, so. All right, autopilot's coming on. There we go. And alt altitude intercept. So we head on up here to our next, our next landmark, 4,500 feet. Auto, our German co-pilot here. Leveling us off. Let's go ahead now and come back on, get back on the cruise power. 
and looking good in the neighborhood, everybody. Looking good. How beautiful this terrain is. Wow. And Cindy and I, we need to go to Scotland and Ireland. We've done Germany. We've done uh, the Netherlands. We've done London. Haven't really done England. Might have been to Canterbury and Dover and Chichester and Salisbury and Newcastle and that area of England a lot when I was a kid. Look at that. Look at this terrain. Oh, again, just think about the stories. Wow. Amazing. But I thought, man, we need to go to Scotland. Hmm. Well, she's turning 50 this year. We've already got a, two big trips planned this year for that. We're thinking about going back onto the water in 2024, sailing again. I don't know. Maybe 2024, maybe 2025 or something like that. But, hey, <laughs> this is no longer a spring chicken here. So, all right. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit, a little bit of power. Push to maybe about 200 knots here. Got about four minutes to our next landmark. Ah, mm, coffee. Ah, speaking of coffee, if you want, there's a link down below if you want to support the channel. Uh, I don't have a Patreon or anything like that, but if you want to buy me a coffee, base price is only $1. You can buy 10 if you want, or you can just buy one. But if you'd like to throw a little support to me and the channel here then uh, please whether you're into flight sim Kerbal Space Program 2 is coming out on the PC next week but I'm going to wait for it to come out on the console so it's going to be much later in the year for that so you're going to see a lot of content creators making Kerbal Space Program 2 but again my degree is aerospace engineering so I will be live streaming Kerbal Space Program 2 once it comes out on the console but I've already got some Kerbal Space Program 1 uh, past content on my YouTube channel oh, or if you're into Dungeon Dragons or if you're into travel because Ant City and I we've got a little teardrop trailer uh, called Voyager and we've got some content for that uh, on my on my YouTube channel plus I just do vlogs sometimes I do shorts so for whatever reason if you want to support me and my channel you can go buy me a coffee link down in the description below <sighs> just just beautiful topography and landscape up here. All right, since so we got a little bit of time here, let's go ahead and crawl back. Let's see what it see what it would look like. Oh, that's a pretty cool view. I think I can. I can, oh, ooh, well, I can set it. Yeah, that's. I'll need to maybe set this as another view. I don't think I can. Let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no, 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 no. I just uh, forgot that one. Uh, nope. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, ah, ah. Chain, chain. Walla, walla, big bang. Bring the power back in here. <laughs> Very cool. How are we doing on terrain? Ah, we're okay with terrain. We clear the terrain. Everything's looking good. Oh, our next castle is right off the nose here. So let's go ahead. Autopilot's coming off. You know the drill. We are going to... Our next waypoint is then a right turn. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to go autopilot off. Go to flight idle. And we're going to go ahead and make a bank. Let that nose fall through. This is, I mean, this is what it is, right? I mean, come on. It's... And again, I'm flying on a controller. I also have a keyboard. So often in real life and stuff, pilots just get themselves into trouble because they're, just, they're forcing the plane to do something aerodynamically it just doesn't want to do. So I'm just letting it, I'm letting the nose come through. 
as we get down here. So if I want to start, you know, leveling off and stuff, I can pull back, which will slow us down. But as I do that, I'll also just bring in some power. And of course, bringing in that power, yeah, it'll speed us up, but it'll also bring that nose up. Because the plane likes, to, it's, I haven't changed the trim settings or anything. So here's Balmora Castle. So we're going to fly. I'm going to go ahead and come off the power a little bit here. And I'm going to go ahead and this, this left turn here, I am going to, I'm going to switch over to my seat so I can see better. We'll switch between seats here. Let's go ahead and go into a bank. Again, I'm not pulling back or anything because I want that nose to come, come down, come through. Oh yeah, we're low now. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, look at this. Hmm. There we are. Look at that. All right, power's coming in. Nice. All right, power's coming in. Let's go ahead and start that climb. 109 knots. Everything is looking good in the neighborhood. Let's go ahead and keep climbing up. Clear the terrain. Get on target. Uh, Luke, you've turned off your, your targeting computer. Is everything okay? Use the force, Uncle Mike Mike. Release your feelings. <clears throat> yep, I'm a nerd. All right, climbing up here. Beautiful. Beautiful terrain, beautiful airplane, beautiful day. All right, autopilot's coming on. Let auto, our German co-pilot here, take us. Now we're heading south, so we're gonna pass over some a couple of their castles, making our way down to Edinburgh Castle. And then once we get there, then we'll make another right turn and start heading into Glasgow. That will be our destination. For this morning here like i said just a little over an hour flight so all right let me bring back come back on the power all right power's coming back there we go let's go ahead and look at that so this is the this is the drone camera in microsoft flight simulator on the xbox series x there we go let's go do something like that huh that way you can really, you can really see the landscape. You know, for like, so for us, for Dungeons and Dragons or any other tabletop or creative writing or whatever it might be, world building, all this kind of stuff. I mean, this kind of terrain is just, I mean, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, you have, you know, you have a battle across the valley. You know, and so there's combat with you know trebuchets and catapults, maybe across this valley. But then, but then the story: what's happening down in the valley? What are the the consequences and the ramifications? And and who's having to you know maybe it's kind of like a third party or a, a village that's dealing with with all this weapons and stuff, you know, flying over their village. I mean, there's all kinds of stories that you can do. That's one of the reasons why I just really, really like. Dungeons and Dragons. It makes sure that you, if you're out there watching, give me a like. If you like this, click that like button. That helps activate the algorithm. It's so much fun to, <laughs> so much fun to just mess around with Discord and. Or uh, not Discord. Uh, uh, what is this? What am, what am I looking at here? <laughs> OBS. Because it is amazing. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in your seat here. Oh, we got just a little over four minutes here before we get to our next landmark, which I think is another castle. Again, thought about doing a castle flight since I've been talking about Dungeons and Dragons here. 
But there's a lot of other, I mean, you know, gaming itself is, is just an excellent way to ignite the imagination, you know, ignite just the creativity and, and to have fun. And it, it, you know, it can be board games, it can be computer games, it can be video games, whatever whatever you're really into. Uh, Aunt Cindy and I, we play these ones called Exit Games. They're by Cosmos. So, what's up, Indie Gamer? Hey, thumbs up because you are amazing. Hey, full disclosure, Indie Gaming. Not really playing much indie games. Uh, I've kind of moved on, just to let you know. So go ahead and, you know, you were taking that torch. So I was like, mm. but, uh, yeah, there was kind of a, a time there where I, I really wanted to play some, you know, these indive independent developer, these indie games like you so amazingly, you know, uh, talk about and all of this kind of stuff. But, you know, life got in the way and all this. Then I've got back in tabletop role-playing games, Stellan Flight Sim, waiting for Kerbal Space Program 2 to release since I'm an aerospace engineer. So, um, yeah, I kind of stopped looking at all of the indie, you know, the indie games that are out there. They still are amazing, though. I mean, I still, I still, you know, follow you on Twitter and everything and on YouTube and all this kind of stuff. And so it's fascinating to actually see you know what people are doing with like unreal engine i think most people are using what unreal engine 5 now to do so much even just these indie games it's just amazing so oh yeah absolutely gotta have oh yeah i gotta have fun and and my personality is just that way where i'm just like oh, oh, oh like squirrel 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 right you know i i've always been that way in my you know my whole life where I'll, you know i'll attach onto something and i'll do it hardcore and then then i'll be like okay that's cool and then i'll move on to something else and I, and I might circle back, so. All right, well, we're kind of up on our next castle, so we know the drill. Autopilot is coming off, going to flight idle. Let's let that nose drop on down here. So, again, I'm just hands off. I'm just hands off right now. I'm letting the nose drop on through, start our descent. But I'm going to get a little more aggressive. Oh, look, there's wind turbines out over there. That's cool. Some type of like little airfield looks like right right down there's so right down there it looks like a little airfield there's some wind turbines that aren't spinning but here's our castle here as we are descending on down again i haven't changed anything all i've done was just come off the power so for all you pilots future pilots all this kind of stuff glamis glamis castle you know I, i'm not forcing the planes nose down i just came off the power kept the same trim settings and that just made the nose drop down. If we want the nose to come down more, we just dump more lift by going into a bank here. Yeah, this is the UK. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we took off from Inverness and flew out over uh, Fort William and, you know, the famous viaduct bridge thing by Fort William. And now we're cutting across over here. Uh, we just went by Balmora. And now we got Castle here. We'll do another in-cockpit flyby of this one. Now we're we're heading down toward uh, Edinburgh. Power's coming in. So, oh, you, oh, cool. Okay, well, just a second here. Oh, look at that. Look at the gardens and stuff here. This castle. Ooh, boy, it's oh, sorry. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here we'll do a external view flyby. Oh yeah, boy. All right, power's coming back in. Let's go ahead and get back on, get back on target. Climb back up here to our 4,500 feet that we've been, yeah, Scotland's beautiful. So been to Inverness, been to Edinburgh. We're just gonna climb back up here, get back onto our flight path. You can see there in the multifunctional display with the relative terrain on. You know, we're, we're getting we're getting back over down here to the sea level. And we don't have a lot of the terrain like we've like we've been having. Oh, she got the wind turbines right off the nose up here on the hill. That's amazing. <laughs> Again, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on the Xbox Series X. It is on Game Pass. Ah. 
All right, Otto, our German co-pilot, he's coming back on. Go ahead and start, continue our climb up. There we are. Wind turb, check out the wind turbines. Oh, there, there's no wind though. I wonder if I, if I, if I actually turned on the wind, if it would actually spin. I don't know. All right, there's a couple more. Another wind turbine out there on that, on that hill. All right. All right, we are heading now. We're going to make this turn to the south, and we are then going to head down to Edinburgh, and I'm going to catch up on chat right here. So, well, thanks. Thanks, Indy. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's that whole, you know, like you said, like, no, like, no, like you said, it, right? You're passionate about it, but, you know, hey, I've done, in a couple weeks here, it will be my 50-second lap around the sun. <laughs> so, been a lot of places, done a lot of stuff. You know, I've got 52 years of experience. And so, yeah, and I like to, I like to share it. I like to talk about it and so on. So, all right, we're going to just have to cut across here. Oh, we got an airport down here. Let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm looking for the air. There's an airport. It's on the multifunk Echo Golf. Papa November, it looks like. Oh, there it is, right on the coast. Yeah, this uh, this this airplane model has a really loud external. Has really toned down the 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 volume for for all of you in who are watching. But to me, it's still really loud when I go to the external view. So, there, there's a little airport. That's a neat airport, right on the coast. Check that out. Beautiful, just beautiful. So yeah, this is one of my first live stream flights that I've done up here in this area. Most of the places that I've been in England have been, or in the UK, have been in England, and usually London and South. So Dover, Chichester, Salisbury, Bath, you know, those kind of, Canterbury, London itself. That's most of the places that I've really been to and explored back when I was a kid. And then Aunt Cindy and I have been to London twice. We've been to really explore Germany. We did a big trip in Germany. Went to Opening Bell at Oktoberfest. I was on my way. <laughs> so. Oh, you're in the South. Yeah, that's cool. So, all right, we're heading to Edinburgh. So Edinburgh's right off the nose here, going to Edinburgh Castle. And then we'll make a right turn and then another, I think, another castle. And then into Glasgow. Glasgow. So, oh, let's go ahead and come back on the power here. Get back into cruise. It will go a little faster this time. It will do 250. Kind of busted the speed limit again since we're below 10,000 feet, but I'm not doing really doing a study level flight here. So you're in the south of England. So where would where would the south of England be? Rye. You're going to say you're in Rye, England. If you say Rye, England, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> yeah what is that uh in i think it's still there um <laughs> uh, so it has like the little the little uh, church i don't know if it's church or fort i really i was there when i was like 16 uh in rye it was actually the first big trip with dad that i ever did but there was like a little fort and there's like a tower you could walk up to the top of. We stayed at a, the Mermaid Inn in Rye. I would imagine the Mermaid Inn is still there because it was like, what was it, like Queen, what was it, Victoria or whatever it was, or whoever it was back in like 1002 or whatever the year was that actually visited the Mermaid Inn. I think it was rebuilt. It was a fire rebuilt like in... 1400s or something like that and so that's where i as a kid in dungeons and dragons dad taking me to rye england seeing what it looked like i was just like no this this like this like is dungeons and dragons i'm like living <laughs> you know dungeons and dragons so it's still there that's amazing yeah i yeah that was so so cool it has like a little you really can't go out there it's not but i mean it's like a little tiny like 
I'll call it a courtyard, if I remember right. But I mean, it's no bigger than the courtyard than the room I'm sitting, if even that big. So, no. All right, so you're 30 minutes away from, or an hour and a half, sorry, an hour and a half from Mirai, so. And then there was this beautiful place. I think it's, we, it was, we, we stayed in a thatched roof in, in, is it Chichester? Is that, oh, you know, it's like C-H-I-C-H-E-S. So like we would stay in, over here in America, we'd probably say like Chichester, <laughs> Chichester. But I think it's Chichester. I think it's down on the coast, if I remember right. So, yeah, see? <laughs> and then there's this funny story when, <laughs> when, uh, oh, okay. Oh, there's a cathedral there. Man, I don't, I don't remember that. I remember back in like, it was, this was back in like 1990. No, not 1990. Nah, back in 84, 85. I think it was the Salisbury cathedral i think that was redoing their the steeple and they were going to put like glass and stuff and back in the day you could actually buy your own little piece of glass they were going to put up somewhere and you could etch you know a saying and they had stuff or maybe it was like 10 maybe it was 10 pieces it wasn't glass it was 10 for the new roof of the steeple and you could etch your saying and i I actually, my grandmother had just died uh, like the year before. And so I did a thing honoring her because she was a very religious woman and all this kind of stuff. And so I, so I did that. So, yeah, so I think that was, I think that was Ch or, uh, Salisbury Cathedral. So, all right, we're coming up off the nose here is Edinburgh. We're going to do a flyby of the Edinburgh Castle, which is up on a hill. It's amazing, <laughs> amazing right there. So. Yeah, I would, and then when I was growing up, the there was a movie, old old movie, right back in like the fifties, sixties, about Thomas Beckett, the Arch Can uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. So I been to Canterbury, been in the cathedral at Canterbury, saw the monument of where Beckett was actually murdered with the, if I remember right, it's got like a a little altar off to the side. Right where he was praying, I guess when he was murdered, and it has like two like wrought iron lightning bolts coming down to the spot. So yeah, I was yeah yeah the whole thing about the Salt that was quite a while ago. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get back in the cockpit here just for a moment, and autopilot's coming off, power's coming off. Let's go ahead and start our descent here to do our flyby. Yeah yeah oh, oh absolutely that's all. I mean, you got to remember, we're over here in America. I mean, compared to Europe and England and Scotland and, you know, in the UK and all that, we have like no modern history, right? <laughs> really. Nothing's like super old until you get into the actual, you know, natives that were here, which there's a lot here in the Carolinas and stuff where I'm at. You know, with the, uh, you know, Native American Indians and all this kind of stuff. So, but yeah, it's very historic over in, over in the UK. So, all right. So we're going down here. Right off the nose is the, there's also like a spire. If I remember right, being here in, in Edinburgh, there's some type of like a park that's got like an old, I don't know if it's an, I don't think it's a, I think it's just like some type of tower, but it's a stone tower you can walk up into. My brother and I went up there. I can't remember exactly what that is, where it's at, but we got the we got the castle right off the nose here as we descend down here. This is going to be this is going to be a pretty. I would think this is going to be a pretty cool flyby here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this external view and it's bringing some power. There we go. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this right here. Now this. This right here is a proper castle. I've been, I've been here. I've been, I've been up that road right there, up to the castle. Look at that. That right there, if that's a medieval castle, that's a Dungeons and Dragons castle right there. 
All right, back in the cockpit, your side. Looking good, let's go ahead and power's coming in and start our climb back up. Hey, 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 it's all good. I, 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 I do this for for those who, who want to share and all that. I mean, really, I mean, think about it. I, I, I know that, you know, so much is about followers and it's about, uh, you know, people, uh, what do you want to say, uh, not just following you, but uh, subscribers and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's about surviving in the world and all that kind of stuff. But I have an in real life job and all that. But you know, if you can count friends on your hand, you know you, you're a you're a pretty uh, lucky person. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do this. Like I said, Sunday mornings. Oh, these bridges over here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and all right, autopilot's coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and just level us off here at 2,500 feet, so we can check out check out these bridges right here. All right, come back. The fourth rail bridge. Wow, that's an engineering marvel right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Indy. Absolutely. So, well, there's definitely some landmarks here. If we can... I'll just go external view. Actually, let's go let's see what it looks like from... Oh, oh, sorry about that. Oh, there's the... That's probably the uh, Edinburgh Airport, International Airport. But here we go. Let's go ahead and check that out right there, huh? That was just, that's some engineering right there going on. Look at that. Go ahead. So the fourth, what's this one? Fourth road bridge. So that's a road bridge, and this is the rail. Oh, uh, got it. Train, cars, modern. Got it. Huh. Very cool. All right, now we're heading up into Glasgow. Or no, we're heading to another castle, and then making a left turn and going down to Glasgow, and that's where we'll land and all that kind of stuff. So, we're just gonna go right up the bay here. Not really sure what castles up here. I I went into the map and Microsoft Flight Simulator and plotted out a flight you know flight plan. And so that way, Otto, our German co-pilot, could you know navigate here, and we could sit back and enjoy the view and talk and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, yes, I'll say yes and no. <laughs> the so I never went into the space business. I never, I never went into the business of sending vehicles to space. My my degree is in aerospace engineering, but I never did that. So uh, later in life, now I have become a stockholder in. You know, um, blue not Blue Origin, excuse me, Virgin Galactic, uh, actually uh, Maxar Space. So I've been become a stockholder in some of those. So I have Tesla stock, so that's kind of SpaceX ish right now. So, um, but I never I never went in the business of sending vehicles to space. But I'm um, actually still because then I got into the business of actually teaching people how to fix large scale power plants. So steam turbine, gas turbine, power plants, or utilities that make the magic, you know, come out of the wall. So uh, electricity. So what is this? I just got a, something chimed on my iPad here. Oh, yeah, yeah, just nothing. Just a reminder. Little Kona, our three-legged alien dog. Got a vet appointment on Monday. And so that's why I was like, bing, what's that bing noise? I was like, oh, it's my iPad. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look here as we... It's beautiful, just beautiful. I have to say though, I'm not really a big fan of flat lowland topography. And we live in the South Carolina, which is, so basically we got three hours to the east and we're at the coast, which is pretty much just, you know, flat. <laughs> or you can go about two hours to the west and then you're in the Appalachian Mountains. So. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Indy. Yeah, I've. I've been doing that now since 2001. So when I graduated from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, back in 1994, and Cindy and I were married same year. And then I actually got into teaching all levels of physics and mathematics to high school students. I did that for six years. And then I got into teaching adults how to do uh, maintenance at power plants. And I've been doing that ever since 2001. So 
kind of got tenure and all this kind of good stuff with the company uh, that I work with and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's been a – we've uh, – the ramp rate of Aunt Cindy and, 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 and my life have – have really, it's been, it's always been a, you know, a gradual ramp up. I mean, we met each other. We were li- literally living in travel trailers, right? Um, not really sure the terminology that you guys have over there, you know, like campers, you know, that you pull behind vehicles. That's what we were living in at college. And then we moved up and then we moved up and then we moved up. And then when about 30 years old, we're able to afford and uh, we had our first little house built and all that. And now we're in our third house that we've owned and it's pretty nice so and of course it's fascinating to me the technology of being able to do this like 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 you know <laughs> oh <my laughs> i love that little hashtag that i came up with i don't know so and the reason i'm uncle mike mike i'm not a parent i'm actually am an uncle and so yeah that's uh that's and then I used Uncle Mike Mike with the three threes. The three threes actually mean something, uh, but the E's are threes. And I did that because everything's available to me if I used Uncle Mike Mike. So the you know my email, my YouTube, Twitter, everything I use that's out there. So if you can go look at up, you know me up in Instagram. I have an account on Instagram. I just never use it. And you know Uncle Mike Mike. So everything's just Uncle Mike Mike. So <laughs> so all right. Well, there's some castle out here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But the landmark is right here, so we'll we'll see what that is, and then we're gonna make this left turn and go land. We'll probably just do a visual approach. The National Wallace Monument. Let's see here. Let's get our let's get our good eyeballs going. And oh, that's some type of interesting like tower castle thing. I might have to look that up on Google. Hmm. The National Wallace Monument. All right. Autopilot's coming off. Power's coming off. I don't even know what this is, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go into a bank again. Just let the hands off the controller. Just let the nose fall on through. Get a descent going. Oh, that's a proper castle right there too. This is a little more looks like looks a little more modern. Doesn't look too medieval. This kind of looks like a like the Biltmore that we've got here in North Carolina. Go ahead and do a proper flyby from the cockpit of this one. I mean, it's in a good location up on that hill and all that, so strategically it's nice, but it looks a little more modern. Sterling Castle, so. All right, power's coming in. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So climb out here. November 3-6, Uniform Mike Mike little citation jet mustangs we're just climbing out now we are now going to head on over to glasgow and that is where we are going to land here so i'll do a complete visual approach no instrument landing or anything like that we're just going to climb up clear the terrain here we've got our terrain relative terrain there in the multifunctional display so we'll just go ahead and continue to let that clear out here so we don't have any yellows on the map greens are all right but we don't want any yellow so i'm going to keep climbing up here once we climb up, looks to be about 3,000 or so. So, yeah, we can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, we got some uh, wind turbines coming in. I'm going to go ahead and continue the climb here. And let's go ahead and... Set to 3,500 feet. Check out the wind turbines down. Oh, there's, there's a wind turbine down there. Wind turbine over there. Oh, look, a bunch of wind turbines. I mean, it's not like the big wind farms that we've got in California or anything like that or out in West Texas, but that's cool. That is cool. All right, so now we're just heading to Glasgow. Again, I'm going to do a full visual approach. Uh, looking at the wind, I think it's a nice day here. I don't think we really have any, any winds. No, no winds to really worry about, so... We can land pretty much any runway that we want to and all that kind of stuff. So but we just got uh, just a few minutes here, less than four minutes before he actually reached Glasgow. I'm going to go ahead and and come back on the power. Get, get set up to about, uh, about 200 knots or something like that. So no, 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 no. They didn't have any. Now when 
the larger wind turbines and stuff, no, they, they really didn't start to happen here until 2000, I would say in the 2000s, you know, so I would say 2000, yeah, I would say 2000, right? So 2001, 2002 is probably when it really started getting going, 2003, 2004, yeah, if I, if I kind of remember correctly, so. All right, well, we're just passing over this, this, this bald, that's what we would call that here. These mountains, we would call them balds here in Carolinas because they're bald. They don't really have trees. So, you know what? I might actually go ahead and land from your seat. So I might just go ahead and let you land here. So this is your seat right here. You're the co-pilot. So... No, so we, we didn't go there. Uh, I've been to, on the top of the White Cliffs of Dover, but no, we really didn't go down to uh, a beach or anything like that, or sands or beach or anything like that when I was in Rye, no. I mean, it was it was, it was kind of cold when we were there. Uh, so it might have been actually like spring break, like this time of year when we were there, I think. I don't think it was summertime. It was, cause it was, it was cold. But it was a pretty funny story in Dover. That's where I actually had my first fish and chips in England ever. <laughs> and so, again, I was like 15, 14, 15 years old. And so dad, I was with Dad, and Dad just said, hey, go in and uh, go get us some fish and chips and get us four coffees because we knew that, you know, the coffees were pretty small. And so I went in there and I said, I need two orders of fish and chips, please, and four coffees. I came out with this grocery bag, and it was back in the day when they still put it in newspaper, right? The chips and, and the fish and all this kind of stuff. And I came out with like this grocery bag and like a little, you know, car carrying thing of the, the four coffees. And I remember getting in the car and it was a it was a nasty day. And we're up on the top of the cliffs of Dover or Dover itself. Uh, I got the airport in sight, so I'm gonna finish the story, then we'll then we'll and then we'll land, we'll check out the airport. And dad's like, what the f what'd you order? I was like, I ordered two fish and chips <laughs> and four coffees, just like you said. But I mean, these, the fillets of the fish were like, like this, I mean, they were huge. And so then when Aunt Cindy and I went over there in 2006, 2007 for our first trip as a married couple to London, we took the little canal on the Thames down to Greenwich and at Greenwich we went to a fish and chips place there and in there you got to actually you know you walked in you got to pick which fillet and which fish you wanted and they would fry it up right there and so yeah that was fascinating that was amazing too but yeah it was like uh, back in the day when they would actually wrap everything up in in newspaper so all right okay let's take a look here so here we are oh man look at that we could have done a straight in approach all right, so, well, with that, here's what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and set the heading bug. So the heading we're going, I'm also going to come over here and set. The CDI, how come maybe this doesn't work over here? I'm going to set the CDI to this and the reason why I'm doing that is this is just going to be a visual reference for us as we are flying so that's basically the, we're going to we're going to land the way that we're heading here but of course we passed over the airport there is the airport so we're going to basically do a, a left hand pattern here and we're going to land on that runway but that just all gives us now a visual reference of which way the runway is and all that kind of stuff. So autopilot is coming off, throttle's coming off, and let's go ahead and now we'll just enter a left pattern here. So we're gonna make a left 90 degree turn and enter a left crosswind here and descend on down. I'm sure Glasgow Airport here is like 100 feet above sea level. So here we go. Oh yeah, you get these big old fish, but okay. 
you know, get my get my head here into the game. So that's what we're doing. So we're on this left crosswind. Airport is in sight. Beautiful day. We're going to descend down here to, I'm going to descend down to maybe about 2,000 feet. All right, let's go ahead and start another left turn. We'll enter a left downwind. And 160 knots, so we're going to go ahead and put in our first notch of flaps. First notch of flaps coming in. That's going to help us slow down. Oh, we're going to do this from your, your seat. So here you are. You're landing, co-pilot. All right. Power's coming in. We don't want to get too slow. All right. Continue the descent on down. Continue the descent on down here. So I do have a little bit of jet time just because when I was working at Cessna Aircraft Company, got to go up in our flight test airplane, which is a bigger version. It was a Citation. So, okay, with one notch of flaps, we need to stay under 185 knots, but to help us stay slow, let's go ahead and go out and we can go ahead and drop the gear. Here comes the gear coming down because we are a beam the airport here. So go ahead and trim up here and gear down. Looking good. Bring in some power now. We got we got more drag going on, so we need to. And trim, 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 as Blanco Lirio would say. Trim, trim, trim. There we go. Come on, trim, trim, trim. There's the airport out over there. I think it's looking good. Power, power. All right. Hey, well, thanks, Indy. Yeah, I need to jump into your stuff, see what uh, what's coming, you know, what's what's out, what's what's good, and all that. I, mean, I, I you know, played a lot of those indie games there, hardcore for a while, and they were great. They were a fantastic experience. I'm not saying they weren't. So, all right, we're turning uh, left base here. Speed's looking good. There's the airport, so we're gonna do a. This is going to be a pretty close approach. Power's coming, coming off the power. Let's continue our descent. We are in a, again, you're landing here. In the right seat, my co-pilot. All right, full flaps coming in. Check the knob. Yep, everything's looking good. Got a retrim now. There's the runway. Okay. All right. Power's coming back. Let's go ahead and start our turn to final. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm way high. That's okay. Okay. Full flaps. Gears down. We go ahead and visual check. Full flaps. Gears down. Say that's a little this is a little biz jet. Five hundred. Looking good. Alright, on V ref, power's coming in. Like I said, doing all this from the right seat. You're landing. Your airplane. Here we go. Oh ho ho. And just a little bit of power. A little bit of power. Alright, flight idle. Come on, come on now. Come on down. There we go. Woohoo! Oh, look at that. Oh, we got a high speed taxiway too. We're coming on the brakes. Off we go. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Glasgow. All right. And flaps coming up. This is Glasgow International Airport. You get all the big heavies here. We're gonna come stop as soon as we get off the 
the runway here and clear the runway and clear the runway. There we are. Let's see if we can, any other players in the area? Yeah, there's a couple of other players in the area. Anybody else here? Nope, no other human players here. Well, there we go. There's our little, our little flight through the highlands of Scotland. It's talking about D and D. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there. And go ahead and jump in so I can chat with you and all that kind of stuff. Let me go ahead and turn off the sound. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was uh, my first flight up here in Scotland on Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox Series X. Indie gamer, I appreciate you coming by. Thumbs up because you are amazing everybody else who was watching hey please if you like don't click that like button it helps activate the algorithm yeah. algorithm algorithm you know you got to get that youtube algorithm going and with that uh yeah i'm also running a giveaway a 500 subscriber a giveaway you can read the descriptions down below it is open right now to us i'll just say sorry indy uh, I'll go ahead and uh, the award is uh, open to U.S. because it's an Xbox code. And since I'm in the U.S., I can only buy Xbox codes. But you can go read the description down there. But if you are not in the U.S., you can always win it and then gift the code to somebody that you like in the United States. That's something that's always available to you. But you can go down in the description and read all about that giveaway and contest rules. I will be live streaming a week from today. Not really sure what I'll be live streaming. Maybe we'll go do some hunting. Maybe we'll just sit and chat and drink some coffee. Maybe we'll go. I don't know. I don't know what we'll do, but uh, I'll think about it, and I'll post that. So watch my YouTube channel about that. And, yeah, I guess with that, I will say, hey, you know, click that like button if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment, share. Come join me in chat in a future live stream and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll see you soon. Watch my channel for other content, shorts, and all that. And with that, I will say game on because I'm your favorite YouTuber's favorite uncle. I am Uncle Mike Mike. Bye, Indy. Bye, everybody else. Woo! Thumbs up because you are amazing. <laughs> Bye. Ah, it's always fun. Always fun to get back into the live live stream especially when you got people like indy who's active in chat makes it so much more fun so yep you're awesome brother <laughs>